Pedro from InfluX. I'm here today with Aaron Steinthorpe from My Dying Bride to talk about Macabre Cabaret and other things. Uh, and Macabre Cabaret comes out November 20th on Nuclear Blast. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, considering we've just entered our second lockdown. Um, but yeah, fine. Thank you. I just noticed that it's been seven months since we last chatted. And a lot of things have happened. I mean, for you, for the band, you guys have been having a very busy year. Full-length album, EP, and a logger. Like, out of these three things, which one excited you the most? <laughs> well, the beer, obviously. <laughs> um, I've, I've made loads of albums, but I've never made a beer before. So the beer was quite an exciting thing. You know, it's nice to have a product that, that we've we've helped make. You know, I'm not a brewer, but we went to the brewery and they have all these hops and other ingredients and they say, right, what do you want to do? And I'm thinking, well, I don't really know what. Let's just mix some stuff up and see what happens. So we got involved with the brewing process and it was trial and error. Of course, some of the uh, some of the early attempts weren't great. We still drank them, obviously, because you have to taste them. So it was a difficult exercise um, <laughs> until we finally. Um, apparently, it's, it's what's known as a. Uh, a Vienna lager. I, I'm not sure why it's, it's known as that, um, but it's really nice, you know. I mean, I would say that, but you know, we, it's just nice to have a product we got involved with that isn't music, you know. Um, and it's nice, and it's something else for the fans to, to get hold of, because obviously we're not playing live, so no one's doing that much. Um, we were lucky; the album came out just before our first lockdown. Um, which was great. And then the EP, as you mentioned, is coming out on the 20th of November. But it's nice to have other little bits popping up here and there, just to let the world know that you haven't gone to sleep and you're still working away at creating things um, and, and just keeping the name alive. Are you guys shipping overseas? Because I wanted to order a case for myself. What What's happening is it's only a very small brewery and... Um, Ideally, what they want is distributors in various countries so that if you live in or the US, you can get it from your own country rather than going the whole international route. So if there are any distributors listening to this, um, give Darkland Brewery in England a call and ship some over because that, that's exactly what we want. We want people everywhere to try it, but we know it's difficult. You know, if you live in Australia, to order a case of beer to travel halfway around the world, it's not going to be cheap. You know, the, the, the shipping is going to cost way more than the beer itself. So ideally, we're looking for distributors. Now, the, the, the tasting process, when you guys were trying to narrow down the final, uh, the, the final results, was that the most exciting part of, of the whole process, tasting different things and going through that? Because it's something completely different from anything you guys have ever done before. It is, yeah. And of course, it's very much a personal thing, you know, because what what I was liking, Neil, our new guitar player, he was sort of think, saying, I don't really like that. It's too strong or it's too dark. It needs to be more golden. And so there was a bit of to and fro uh, until, as I say, we honed in on one that looked great. It had the right sort of um, fizz and the bouquet was just right. And the flavour... Because I've learned all this recently. The flavour is as soon as you quaff it, when it coats your tongue, that's one flavour. Once you've swallowed it, there's an after flavour, which should also be pleasant. And so we had a really difficult time <laughs> drinking all this stuff. <laughs> and to settle on one that we, we all agreed is really nice. Uh, it won't be everybody's cup of tea, which is fair enough. No beer is. But we like it and we hope that the fans like it. And, you know, seeing the artwork on the cans as well. I mean, the, the cans we've got here, it's, it's printed in matte. Um, so it has an almost like sandpaper feel to it. So it's not going to slip out of your hand. Uh, and it I can hear it. I can hear it when you're going with your hand through it. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's got a good grip to it. Um, so, yeah, and the next ones should have a black, uh, a black top as well. Um, the, the next run but it's nice to see a product like that you know we've never done a drink before but now we've done it I'm 
quite enthusiastic about doing a wine because um, I do like my wine. I've just this this was last night's escapade, a massive bottle of Bordeaux with this great metal label. Um, so I'd love to do a wine with a, you know, something like that as well, something tactile, so that when you've actually finished it, you don't throw it away. Exactly, it becomes almost like a collector's item. Yeah, and that, this is what I'm finding annoying. I've got all these all over the place. I don't want to throw them away. I, I, you know, any normal beer, when I've finished it, I'll crush it and throw it in the recycle bin. I can't do that with these. You can, because <laughs> it's like a piece of you. Cr crushing that can is like crushing a little bit of your soul in it. Yeah, I don't know what to do with them, though. I'll just I'll store them all somewhere. Well, I was going to ask you to autograph one for me and mail it to me. Since I can't drink the beer, at least I would get the can. Yeah, well, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll sort some beers out as well. We, we, can, we can work something out. All right, sounds great, sounds great. Moving on from the beer, which is always a great thing to talk about, to the EP, which is the next great thing to talk about, because that's the next thing that's coming down the pipe for you guys. Macabre yep. Cabaret. Are, are we living in a macabre cabaret, or we're living in a carnival of the macabre? Well, it's a bit of both, isn't it? It is um, it is a kind of outlook on life and how relationships work and the fun and games we have, but also the hostility that can sometimes arise from relationships. Um, but because of the way I write, um, it, it, it's not super obvious what I'm trying to say, because I do like to write in a kind of poetic style. And more often than not, you need to read between the lines to fully understand the message that I'm trying to get over. Um, because I don't like it when, when, when people just shout orders at you all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I write with a bit more of a flamboyant style. And um, for me, the macabre cabaret is what we're looking at at the moment. Um, even though the song was probably written about two years ago, um, it's still it's still my broad outlook on the confusion of love. Where you're supposed to go if you're in love? Are you supposed to be happy? Surely you're supposed to be happy. Why does it hurt so much? You know, th there's pain and all kinds of things, and it's it, it's for me it's just it's interesting how life throws things at you, um, and you you deal with them in. in your own specific way and you hope that the outcome um, will be fruitful for you. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it quite often isn't. Um, so we need to tread very carefully. Did the pandemic drive you guys to release this EP now or, or you kind of had this uh, under wraps, but already in the plans for your 2020? Yeah, it was already already done and dusted. Um, we recorded the EP at the same time as the album. Everything was done all at the same time. But our engineer, Mark Minot, he has tweaked the overall sound of the songs on the EP just to give them a standalone sound so it doesn't sound just like the album. Um, and Nuclear Blast picked the three songs on the EP because we just argued all the time about which songs we wanted. Because <laughs> we, we all contribute to the writing process. So when someone threatens to take one of your songs away and put them somewhere else, you kind of fret a little bit and you say, hang on a minute, whoa there. So we gave it to the record label, they know best. Um, and it was a fine decision, I think. That they, they've done a good decision. And we've, uh, you know, the artwork's beautiful, done by uh, Roberto Bordin from Italy. Um, I just ordered some prints of it myself, actually. Uh, it's just a wonderful piece of work. Uh, again, like the album, it's a great piece of artwork. And I have a habit of removing our logo off the artwork and then getting a print because they just look wonderful without the logo on. Um, in fact, Roberto has redesigned our My Dying Bride logo for this EP as well. So the old school logo isn't there. It's something new, which we'll use for the next few months uh, until we do something else, which is probably going to be a live streaming concert. If it looks like 2021 isn't going to be a live year. Yeah, it, it, I kind of have a feeling we're not going to see life back to normal probably until the end of 2021, beginning of 22. Uh, yeah. Because even, I mean, you, you're experiencing now your second lockdown in the UK and, uh, you know, the, life seems very bleak. And even with a vaccine out, it's going to take time to roll out that vaccine to everybody. And there's going to be a lot of logistics stuff happening that's going to prolong the ability that bands like yourselves to go out on tour and be on the road. 
Oh, God, yeah. I mean, even just being in a tour bus, you know, you, you can't get away from people in a tour bus. Um, and a festival is, you know, you can't socially distance at a festival. It just doesn't work. No. It's, it's not realistic. Um, so you, you're right. I think um, certainly the beginning part of 2021, nothing will be happening. Um, it could be a year from now. Um, you know, we could be looking at maybe winter 2021 before certain small gigs are allowed to go ahead. Um, and yeah, probably 2022 when things slowly return to normal. Seems like a million miles away, but you know, our last concert um, was September 2017. So already My Dying Bride haven't played live for three years. Um, we're kind of used to it. Um, but you know, we feel for the the bands who are touring and you know loads of bands will do like 100 shows a year that's yep. how they make money that's how they pay the bills that's how they keep the wolf from the door and they're losing money all the time now and i really feel for those bands it doesn't affect us in the same way because even in a good year we might do 10 or 12 shows maybe 18 in a really good year so live doesn't doesn't really affect us um like it is doing lots of other bands um, so we're surviving the lockdown relatively easily, to be honest. But, you know, our friends Paradise Lost, they, they gig like crazy. So yeah, they, they just must, had a live stream, actually. That's right. Yeah. Uh, they must be crawling up the walls in their houses at the moment because they spend most of the time on the road, more time on the road than they do at home. It's completely reversed now. And that's going to kind of mess them up a little bit. I mean, I haven't spoken to any of the guys for a while, but it, it, it's not great fun for a lot of people. No, I, I saw them in 2018 in Toronto, and that was their first show in Toronto in 10 years. And it just goes to show that when a band comes to, and I say this all the time, and it's even more true now, when a band comes to your town, go see the band. Support the band on that tour. Go see the band. Pick up some merch and support them. You just don't know when's the next time you're going to have that pleasure, that almost honor to see that band perform live. And I think sometimes we took things for granted. If there's one thing perhaps positive that will come out of this is that we won't take that kind of stuff for granted anymore. No, I think you're right that people, are, I mean, they're so keen to get back to live shows, even small ones in, a, in, in your local pub, you know, just a small stage in a corner. We're just craving some kind of live entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, up to the big stadium gigs. You know, we, we miss that because it's it's when you're into rock music, the records and the collecting of memorabilia is fine, but it's the live gigs. That's what you want because it's loud. It's in your face. You can scream and yell and get involved with it. And you're there with thousands of like-minded people. You're all brothers and sisters all at the same time. And it means something. It's a way of life. When that's denied to you, it's an awful feeling and it really affects people because their way of life has now changed and it's difficult right. difficult to get down that new road, you know. Um, so the sooner live music comes back, the better. And I think, you know, the online streaming things, we might end up doing one of those if the pandemic looks like it's going to roll on to the end of 2021. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sort of, I'm in two minds about them because... Even would all... you do them as a live stream or would you guys pre-record it and then stream it? Where do you stand on, on those two options? I, I like both um, because, of course, if you, re if you pre-record it, uh, if you make any mistakes, you can edit them out. And you've also got the opportunity to do a bit of colorization to make it look really glamorous and expensive. Um, but, of course, then it's not live and people want live because they they like some of the mistakes you know that's that's part of being you know watching a band do stuff wrong is almost more entertaining than if they sound like their own cds um so it's it, i'm not sure but live of course there could be technical hiccups which could foul things up and if people have paid for a ticket and i don't know the internet's down or something you know it's it, it's a tricky one um but I think we might have to do it live because even after all these years, I get super nervous before I go on stage. And it's those nerves and that angst and that terror that propels me to do what I do on stage. And 
the, the feedback from the audience is palpable. You know, I can feel it, and it, it's it's it, it is the atmosphere, and it's amazing, and it's it's how live should be. Now, if we've just got cameras in an empty hall, those that nervous energy is not going to be there because there's nobody to laugh if you do it wrong. And if you're going to just film it all and edit it later, it doesn't matter if you fluff the words up because you can just retake it. And how do you express yourself properly when there's nobody to express to there's nobody there yeah. when i sing when i sing i i can i can see all these faces i'm singing for them and at them at the same time and that you know I, I do all these movements and because i'm passionate about what i do if it's sterile there's no one there do i just stand still and just go through the motion <laughs> and when the song's ended do you even bother saying thanks because there's no you know, there's no one there um it's it's a tricky one, but I think to keep that nervous energy, we would have to do it live because then I'd know. Okay, there are there are cameras, but there's still people at the other end, and it yeah. is live. So you've got to concentrate and don't make mistakes because people have spent good money to watch this. So we'll probably do a live one sometime in 2021. Oh, that's exciting. That's really exciting. Uh, going back to the EP, you mentioned that the label kind of picked the songs for this EP. But when you're looking at an album and when you're looking at an EP, I'm sure you approach them completely different because the EP, there's perhaps a little bit more freedom. You not you don't have to worry about the structure of, of the whole thing. It's just a couple of songs thrown together. You don't have to worry about the fluidity of them. So in your mind, when you're putting an EP together, does is there a specific work that goes into it when you compare it to how much work goes into the full length album? Yeah, in the past, when we did EPs for Peaceful Records, they were a standalone entity because they were recorded differently as well. You would go into the studio, you would record the music and hand it to the record label. And that, that was how you did it. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Macabre Cabaret and A Secret Kiss and A Purse of Golden Stars were recorded at the same time as the Ghost of Orion's music, um, which we've never done before. Um, so it was a, a learning curve, to be honest. Um, but I think the next time we do an EP, we will do it separately because you're right. When you look at the B sides of our past EPs, there's quite often something a bit weird going on because they're good territory to do experiments that might not work on an album or might stick out like a sore thumb on an album. Um, so EPs really are a good place to mess around with a few ideas. Um, you've got to put some standard music in there, obviously, um, but you, they're quirky little things, EPs, because a lot of people, they'll just bypass an EP. They'll get the album, they'll just figure an EP's, oh, you know, I'll just wait, I'll, get, I'll wait for the next album. Um, so you're right, they are a great, experimental thing to do uh, we didn't get much of an opportunity to do it this time as i mentioned but for the next one um i think you know we've got some some quite interesting ideas um andrew's already writing new music and um i can pretty much guarantee you the next ep that comes out from my dying bride goodness knows when that will be that will be a bit more quirky than uh, macabre cabaret although saying that you know, um, there is actually a, a hidden fourth track. I, I was going to mention that. You're saying that it's not quirky, but orchestral shores, that's very quirky. Yeah. I, when, I, when I heard that song, I'm like, you know what would be amazing? If you guys had Apocalyptica do a collaboration with you guys on that song. How how insane would that be? Yeah, that, that would be great. You know, <clears throat> we, uh, we like our little collaborations. Um, you know, we, we had uh, Lindy Fay on the album, Lindy Fay Heller and uh, Joe Quayle playing the um, the cello for us. And it's nice to to have another person joining in the fun, if you like. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, EPs are they're, they're a great sounding board for, for new ideas. Um, and I'm amazed, you know, Pedro, at the amount of press that we've got for this EP. Because again, when a magazine reviews an album 
they almost have to review it because it's come out on a, a big label and someone has to review it. When it comes to EPs, quite often, again, they can be overlooked because the magazine or the radio show just think, that's just an EP. Who cares? But I have got, I've been doing press like you wouldn't believe. Uh, so it's amazing the amount of people talking about the EP. It's way bigger than it was back in the old days. I don't know if that's the power of nuclear blast or I don't know if it's simply that people they are craving <clears throat> more music now because we haven't got it live. So they want anything they can get their hands on. I, I think it's a perfect storm. I think it's a little bit of everything you mentioned, but I think it's also a result of how strong the Ghost of Orion was. So that the album came out in March. The album was super strong. And I think people uh, are, are kind of craving for, for more, right? So th this to me, when I listened to this EP, I felt that these songs were not like, you know, uh, excess baggage that you guys kind of had left around. The quality on, on the EP is outstanding. And it felt to me that was almost the continuation of what you did with the Ghost of Orion as you progress perhaps towards the next full length album. I think a lot of that quality that you had on that debut, on that debut, I'm sorry, on the Ghost of Orion, how exciting this release was earlier on in the year, it kind of carried you guys over to the EP now. And I think that's why you're seeing all this excitement about the EP. Yeah, the album got masses of press. Um, I, I started doing interviews for the Ghost of Orion on the 3rd of January this year, and I'm still doing them. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's been seen, it's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it's been really intense, but it's been great as well, because quite often the interviews are less like an interview and more like a conversation like this. So that they're less kind of stuffy, you know, and in the old days, you'd be stuck with a telephone to your ear for hour after hour as you, you go through all the magazines. Now, of course, with Skype and all the other things, it's so much easier. And it's nice to put a, you know, a face to the name, because um, for the most part in the past, I have no idea what any of the journalists even look like. Um, now I know what they all look like. Um, so yeah, times times are changing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of um, talk about my dying bride at the moment. It's not just the beer and the album, but I don't know. It's I don't know what it is. There's some magic in the air. And after 30 years. It, that's great, you know, it's like we've got a new lease of life. You know, we've got Jeff doing the drums for us now and Neil's on guitar. So we've got two new members in the band, new record label, new record. Everything feels fresh, like like someone's given us another bite of the cherry and said, go yeah. on, you've got a second chance. Do something good with it. So we're going to do something good with it. And, and I think you guys are definitely doing that. And, and you mentioned that for this EP, you guys didn't really pick the songs. You allowed the label to, to choose them for you. So looking back now at the ones that they picked, which one rings supreme for you? Which which one do you feel closer to? Oh, it's like, which is your favorite child? Yeah, I, I know, I know. It's, it's a horrible question to ask. It is one of the, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to even pick a favorite from the album, never mind the EP. I mean, I do, I do think that um, A Secret Kiss is a very strong song. I, I really like it. Um, and you know it's a, it's it's just it's it sounds good it, i think it reads well lyrically um and it's it's classic my dying bride i suppose a hundred percent i i feel a hundred percent when i when i heard the ep i was like okay you guys started off with a 10 plus minute track to open it up which it's like okay it, here's the meal now you have to digest it you know so it's, it was like this big big meal like right at the beginning then you come with that song in, in second place and i was like this song when i think of my dying bride this song is what i think of you know what i mean so that yeah. song becomes who you guys are it, it's such an enig enigmatic track it's absolutely incredible yeah and, and nuclear blast did a really good uh, lyric video for it as well um which, which was nice to see because lyric video is a free of charge so <laughs> <laughs> we always like a good lyric video. Um, we've just um, seen preview of the Macabre Cabaret video. Um, so that should be ready um, probably by the end of next week. So the video for the new EP should be out at least within a fortnight, I would have thought. Um, so that's something to look forward to as well, I guess. Some more My Dying Bride stuff for people to get their teeth into. 
Yeah, you you guys, uh, 2020, you know, it has been a shit show overall. But for you guys, I think you have to consider this a very successful year. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we were, this was almost going to be our comeback year for gigs because, as I said, the last gig we did was in September 2017. Um, so we were looking forward to playing some gigs. We were only going to do about 12 or 13 anyway, but it would have been nice to just gone out there and said hello to the fans, let them know, because uh, they're, they're all aware of what's been going on and they haven't seen us for a number of years. Um, but I think things like this, visual things, um, really help, you know, um, because bands, uh, fans crave information. In the olden days, before the internet, um, if the band didn't release anything, there was no talk of the band whatsoever because there was no means for that talk to get out to the fans unless you did interviews in magazines and they bought the magazine. But with the social media platforms now and, uh, and Skype and things like this, even if we hadn't re released a record this year or two, we'd still be discussing stuff because people want to hear what you're doing. We'd be making our own videos you know, I, I, I do all these lovely countryside walks every day. And Nuclear Blast said, why don't you film yourself on one of these walks? So I did, thinking, who's going to watch this? And everybody watched it. And it's just like, <laughs> they just want something. You know, if they can't see you live, they just they just want something. And, and, and it's the same with me. You know, I, I had tickets to see Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. That all went, you know, that all went... Well, all our tickets were apparently... Everybody says, keep hold of your tickets. You can use them next time. So I'm keeping them in a safe place. Um, but, you know, I, I miss these kinds of things. Um, but thankfully, as I say, you only have to turn your mobile phone on and there's loads of information about all your favorite bands. And th that's a lot better than it was when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm also a big fan of Nick Cave. I've never had a pleasure of seeing him live. Uh, th there's actually a band uh, a doom band that you I'm sh you know of uh, tomorrow's rain from Israel uh, they did a cover of Nick Cave and uh, there you go there you have it yeah you're, you're on that record so uh, I'm sure we think song yeah what what an incredible cover those guys did it, it's it oh, just it's sounds really. outstanding and the album is outstanding I, I really love that record as well yeah I was chatting um, was it yesterday or the day before um, we were doing an interview and um, we ended up talking for such a long time that I said, uh, do you know what? I'm getting hungry. Can we pause this and we'll, we'll carry on again on Monday? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, brilliant. Um, but to be honest, and I, I'm not taking anything away from Tomorrow's Rain, the weeping song is a brilliant song anyway. It would be yeah, really hard to mess it up. <laughs> It is true. It is an incredible track. It is an incredible track. I have one more question for you, and that is, looking back at 2020, we're getting almost towards the end of the year. Is, is there any lessons that you're going to take from this year? Oh, wow. Um, that is a, that's a heavy question, really. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, when when that first lockdown happened, the schools closed as well that are actually still open at the moment. So I had, um, I basically had my daughter from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock in the evening, every single day for month after month after month. Now I've never spent that much time with any human being in my entire life. So <laughs> it, it was kind of, it was great fun. Do you know what I mean? After the ordeal she'd been through after beating cancer, to, to be able to sit there and read with her um, I keep reading poetry, but she doesn't like it. She doesn't get it. Uh, but I'm trying to encourage you to write some as well. Uh, but to read with her and do the maths and the history and English and uh, even music, it's been so rewarding, you know, because that that bond is, is it's rock solid now. It was it was already, mm -hmm. but it's just when you spend so much time with someone. You, you learn about all their funny little mannerisms and the quirks that, that, that make them who they are, the, those characteristics. And you, I, I see her growing and it's just, it's just truly wonderful. But I'm glad she's back at school because it, it frees up my day now to do things like this and to, to be a bit more creative with the band. Because when you are um, spending 
12 hours a day with someone, you've got no time to do anything creative. I, I, I really love photography. My camera stayed in its camera bag all month after month after month. At least now, um, I've got time to go out and be a bit more creative. But still, that time we spent together, you know, I'll never get that again. And it was awesome. I, I, I totally hear you. And, and I think there's a lot of positives coming out of this pandemic in terms of people almost being forced into a position where they have to spend time together and get to know each other a lot better because our, our lives move so fast that we almost, once again, take for granted the, our own relationships that we have with our loved ones. We and do, it's not yeah. until that person is not around anymore that we then look back and say, I should have spent more time with them. Like, for example, for me, I, my mother is in Portugal and we talk on the phone once a week. We're doing a uh, Facebook uh, live thing so I can actually see her and she can see me and and, and we can see each other. We never did that before. You know, right. it, it not even ever crossed our minds to do something like that. But now it's like, OK, I can't travel there to see you. You can't travel here to see me. How can we do something where we can see each other? And now we're going to take that going forward. I, I don't see us going back to just talking on the phone and not seeing each other's faces anymore. You know, so I, I think you always have to look for those silver silver linings. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, people people complain about lockdown and really they just sat on the couch watching Netflix for 12 hours. You know, they, there's, you know, we our grandparents fought two world wars, you know, for our freedom. Stop complaining. You know, it's not as bad as you really make it out to be. OK, for some people, it, it is you know mentally straining for them to get through these kind of times. Um but it will pass. It will pass. You know, we're not at war. No one's shooting at us. No one's trying to kill us. Sit there and watch Netflix. Drink some old earth. <laughs> <laughs> and just put your slippers on and just relax till the world rights itself again. Just stop complaining so much. It's, yeah. I, That's I, my view anyway. Do I, people I, complain? I, I, for me coming into this, one of the things I was more worried about was my marriage. I'm like, you know, I, I'm going to spend more time with my wife now than ever before. Uh, how, how are we going to get? How are we going to get at the end of this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, are we going to survive? Not the virus, but are we going to survive each other? That, that yeah. was the thing that I was really worried about. So I, I think we we're doing okay. I think we're fine. That that's good news because there was an awful report on the news a, a month ago or so on the BBC saying that um, violence in the home has gone up eight hundred percent in the UK since this pandemic. I mean, what are these people doing? <laughs> Everybody's I, I, killing each other. It's insane. I know people don't don't know how to relax anymore or or just walk away from a bad situation and yeah. just give each other still the space that you need. Just because you're stuck in the house doesn't mean you can't give each other the space that you need. But I think a lot of it has to do who you are already as a person. I, yeah. I think when I was talking to somebody the other day and I was saying that being put in a position of power, for example, does not make you good or bad. You were either good or bad before we, you got into that position. That position just exacerbates who you are as a person. Oh, so yeah. I think this pandemic is the same. The pandemic is not making people good or bad. It's just exacerbating who they already are to begin with. You know, so I see it that way. Yeah, you're absolutely true. Those those awful characteristics, which they've they've kept suppressed for all their lives just coming out these weird demons are suddenly coming out from the back of people's brains and they they're just they're losing their shit and you yeah know. They, need, they need to listen to more music definitely that will cure everything i agree all right aaron thank you very much for your time today i really appreciate it best of luck with the release on november 20th the ep macabre cabaret comes out on nuclear blast best of luck with the logger but i don't think you're going to need much luck with that because with everybody at home they have more time to drink and listen to music so you know, they can pick up a case of beer and the EP at the same time and and, and have uh, double the fun. And even if they're not going to drink the beer, hey, Christmas is around the corner. You might know someone who is. So, but yeah, thanks for this chat, Pedro. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Um, always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, let's hope it won't be a long time since we chat again. Yeah, let's let's do that. Take care. Cheers, buddy. See you later. See you.